Hello and welcome. I'm John Garlick and I'm here with Lieutenant Ronnie Murray of the Calhoun County Sheriff's Office and this is Calhoun County's Most Wanted. Ronnie. Uncle John. How Again, good to see you. Good to see you. Always a pleasure to have you on the show. Yeah, you're all right to hang out with. Yeah, so are you. Thank you. So speaking of hanging out, we got more people hanging out in the jail because of what happened last week. There we go. We got three more. Now we're up to 5,010. 5,010 people brought to justice because of the caring listeners. I know watchers. every one of those up there. Do you? I do. You know, you need to hang around a better better group of people. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know there, Ronnie. <laughs> this, may, this may explain a lot about you. It's just from being here. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, something else that might need explaining, I got a phone call a couple weeks ago from you. It was from me. It yeah. was from you. It, it, they said it was it was Lieutenant Ronnie Murray, and that you had a warrant for my arrest, and I needed to send you money so you wouldn't come arrest me. And and just so everybody knows, <laughs> that never happens. It never. We will never call you and tell you owe money, or that we have a warrant. We will come and find you if we have a warrant. Those are scams. Don't fall for it. Yes. Do not send money. I mean, you can't send me you money. Said, but no, it isn't gonna help. <laughs> Yes, so we don't do that. We don't call people on the phone and say, we have a warrant, send us money. So please, don't send anybody money. No. That's probably a good rule. Any Somebody it calls is. you on the phone and says, blah, 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 send me money. Don't, don't do it. You know, a lot of times they prey on grandparents because they know grandparents will want to help out their grandchildren. So they'll say, hey, we got little Johnny here in jail. He needs to be bailed out. Send me $1,000. Well, all right. So... Pay attention to those scams, call in uh, for the lineup you're about to see, and stay with us here on Calhoun County's Most Wanted. And welcome to this week's edition of Calhoun County's Most Wanted. First up in our lineup this week, Al Lee Reynolds. Mr. Reynolds, last known to be living in Anniston, he's wanted for failure to appear on sexual abuse first, possession of a controlled substance, bribing a public servant, promoting prison contraband, possession of marijuana first, selling and delivering of drug paraphernalia and bond revocation on possession of marijuana first, bribing a public servant and selling and delivering drug paraphernalia. And meet Robert Litter Litterdale. Mr. Litterdale, last known to be living in Anniston, he is wanted for failure to appear on receiving stolen property first. Meet Robert Tompkins, Mr. Tompkins, last known to be living in Southside, he's wanted for a failure to appear on possession of a controlled substance. And this is Sky Martin, Mr. Martin, last known to be living in Carrollton, Georgia, he's wanted for failure to appear on possession of a forged instrument. And have a look at John Geyer, Mr. Geyer, last known to be living in Ohatchee, he's wanted as a sex offender for failure to honor the Sex Offender Registration and Notification Act. This is Kiara Hartley, Miss Hartley, last known to be living in Talladega. She's wanted for probation violation for possession of a controlled substance. And have a look at Crystal Smith. Miss Smith, last known to be living in Heflin. She's wanted for failure to appear in obstruction of justice by using a false ID. And that's it for the first half of our lineup. Stay tuned for the second half later in the show. Welcome back. We hope you saw somebody in that half of the lineup that you might know where they are. And if you do, give Lieutenant Ronnie Murray a call. You call, he hauls. We have a very special guest here today, my dear friend, Attorney Randy Payne. John. Randy, good Ronnie. to see you. It's good, good to, to see, see you. you. Great to see you always. So people might be wondering why do we have Calhoun County's most famous and most excellent defense attorney on the show. It's not to talk about <laughs> defense law, is it? Although yeah. we should do that one day. Well, we can one day. <laughs> but this is Mental Health Awareness Month. That is correct. And you are the county's premier mental health attorney. I appreciate that title. Oh, <laughs> yes, you are. You're it. I carry it with honor. <laughs> uh, it is Mental Health Awareness Month, and also uh, it's getting hotter outside. And we see a lot of m mentally ill persons that are literally walking our streets because of life circumstances and things of that nature. And I think uh, it's very important to be aware that we may see people that 
are demonstrating behaviors that they're not doing well. But uh, the end message in all of this is to confront mental illness out in the light. Uh, we don't need to uh, whisper behind people's backs. We need to address them directly and try to help them. This is not about a label uh, or uh, uh, just coloring someone with, well, they, they can't function, so avoid them. We're here to help. And uh, part of the uh, process that we work with is the commitment process through our local probate court. I uh, would like everyone to be aware that if you know someone, whether it's a neighbor, a friend, or a relative that is not able to function properly on their own, there is help for that person. And that um, the commitment process, when you hear about it, sounds like a scary thing. But again, it's designed to help people, help get them stabilized, get them the medication that they may not have ever had or may have had and have stopped taking or may have run out of. Uh, and if you uh, feel that you know someone that needs that process, you can start that by calling our local mental health center, which we refer to as Highland Health System, at 256-3403. Uh, and you can talk with Christine or Taryn or our uh, mental health officer, Sergeant Moses, and they can help get that process started. Yeah, because law enforcement, Ronnie, you, you know, law enforcement is typically the first one to encounter somebody on the they street, are. the situation Randy was talking about. And there's very few options mm -hmm. available, and unfortunately, because of a lack of treatment beds and crisis beds, they end up in jail. But the commitment process gets them out of jail. And when I was mental health officer, and now when Carl is mental health officer, we get, we, sometimes we have to arrest people. We do. Right? And um, this is something that's very near and dear to my heart, as you know. Um, People, um, people may get the wrong idea, um, especially law enforcement, and that's why we go through extensive training uh, and the, on the mental health side of what we do. Um, show up on a scene and somebody's just out of their mind, our first thought normally would be they're on drugs. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not always the case. So I think, I think the sheriff for sending us to the training that he does, I mean, it, it helps a lot. And then we got Randy and, of course, you, Sergeant Moses also to help us, you know, talk through what's going on. We can always call you on the phone, which is amazing, uh, and let you know what we have. And you may actually have a record of that person already, so we kind of know what we're dealing with. Um, and I know it's near and dear to the sheriff's heart as well, um, especially the mental health side, because we do see so much of it coming into the jail. It's, it's almost like the family doesn't want to deal with them, so they call us just to take them to jail, but they need help, and that's where you guys come in. And um, Again, it's near and dear to my heart. So. Yeah, so we, we want to stop criminalizing mental, yes, mental illness and, and get them the help they need, and that's, that's the commitment process. There's so many myths. There were, there were a lot of myths about commitment. The, back, in the, back in the day, I used to hear all the time, well, it had to be a family member that commits the person. But what's the, what's the criteria? What, what, what is that, Randy? Anyone can file a commitment. Uh, it can be a neighbor, a friend, family member. Sometimes it's somebody that just works with you, that you're having a rough time at work and it's obvious your mental il illness is coming to the surface. Uh, but you, you, you don't have to be a family member. The biggest thing that I would like to see is also using the commitment process wisely. Uh, sometimes people will call simply because a family member may not be doing exactly what they want them to do. And that's, that's not a reason to use the commitment process, even if they have a mental illness diagnosis. Uh, I would like to encourage people to get directly involved by trying to get their friend or their loved one to the mental health center first. I don't want people to have to go through a commitment process. But one thing the commitment process is not is something that puts people away. Those words have been used in my office more times than I can remember. And this process does not do that. It is a short-term stabilization process most of the time. We have some people that we have gone through the commitment process to help that because of the severity of their illness may stay hospitalized a long time. But we have not taken them out of society forever. I think it's an old myth. Uh, People have visions of old black and white movies and sanitariums, and that's not what we're dealing with. It goes back to the old days prior to the 1963 Act 
And uh, we're going to talk to Randy again after our quick break here, and you're going to see the second half of our lineup. So stay with us here on Calhoun County's Most Wanted. And welcome to the second half of our lineup. First up this half, Billy Rozell. Mr. Rozell, last known to be living in Mumford. He's wanted for failure to appear on theft of property second and theft of property third. And we'd like you to meet Toshe Iron. Miss Iron, last known to be living in Anniston. She's wanted for probation violation for theft of property first. And this is Ray Hill. Mr. Hill, last known to be living in Hartzell. He's wanted for failure to appear on breaking and entering a vehicle and theft of property third. And meet Miranda Humphrey. Miss Humphrey, last known to be living in Gadsden. She's wanted for probation violation on possession of a controlled substance. And this is Tedrico Armstrong. Mr. Armstrong, last known to be living in Anniston. He's wanted for failure to appear on assault first. Meet Allison Maine, Miss Maine, last known to be living in Altoona. She's wanted for failure to appear on possession of a controlled substance, possession of marijuana second, and use and possession of drug paraphernalia. That's it for our lineup this week. If you have any information on the whereabouts of these folks, please give Crime Stoppers a call. That number 1 251 7867. Welcome back. We hope you saw somebody in that half of the lineup. Uh, you might know where they are. And if you do, call Ronnie. <laughs> you call. He hauls. We're here with Randy Payne, attorney extraordinaire in town, um, leader in the mental health commitment world. And so just before the break, we were talking about how that, that fear of committing people for the rest of their lives, mm -hmm. and you know, that, that comes from you know, prior to the 1963 act that pulled people out of hospitals. And uh, it's one of the reasons we don't have treatment beds now. Is, is there's just not enough beds. Mm -hmm. So you can't. There's no legal way to keep somebody in an institution for mental illness the rest of their lives. That's a criminal thing. And uh, so we don't need to be afraid of that. But we do need to get people help. And uh, you, you were talking that it's, it's anybody who witnesses the behavior can, can do the commitment. But there's other limitations on it. It's got to be certain kinds of behavior, right? That's correct. There needs to be what we describe legally as overt acts. It can't be they're just acting peculiar. Uh, and usually overt acts will include things such as homicidal ideations where they're trying to hurt or harm someone or... Uh, many times mentally ill persons will threaten to kill uh, not only other people, but they'll threaten to kill voices that they're hearing. Mm -hmm. And it's a common reaction from persons with a schizophrenia diagnosis that hears voices on a regular basis to yell at the voices if the voices don't leave them alone. Um, but other overt acts would be uh, doing things that m put themselves at danger, like walking in traffic as if they don't know there's cars coming. Uh, that puts not only themselves at danger, but other persons that might have to swerve and avoid them that could be in a wreck. Um, the um, behaviors also must not be the result of being under the influence mm -hmm. of alcohol or drugs. Mm -hmm. Now, many persons with mental illness will occasionally abuse some type of substance, namely marijuana. Um, if you know they've been smoking marijuana, that's one issue, but the main issue is, did the behavior occur solely because the marijuana had them under the influence? And typically that's not the case. I think when you were a mental health officer, uh, we had one case that was dismissed once we had a hearing, and the hearing was needed, uh, but that person, there was substantial evidence that person had been drinking a lot of alcohol for days, mm -hmm. and that that was the sole cause of their psychosis, if you will. Uh, the um, uh, petition that is filed is what I prepare in my office, but anyone that wants to file a petition needs to start at Highland Health Systems because they have to prepare paperwork that goes into their system because they track commitments for the mm -hmm. State Department of Mental Health. Um, then typically that person will come see me and I'll prepare the formal petition that the petitioner signs. I'll file that into probate court and it'll get set for a hearing. That'll lead to an examination by a psychiatrist and then the psychiatrist will offer testimony during that hearing as to their findings 
uh, which is whether they suffer from a mental illness. If so, what is their diagnosis? Um, that if they don't get treatment, they'll continue to suffer mental distress. And uh, the psychiatrist will also offer recommendations. Mm -hmm. And we have two forms of commitment, both inpatient or outpatient. Large majority are outpatient commitments. And uh, those orders from the court are good for five months, which motivate that person to get treated for at least five months. Mm -hmm. And if they stop doing so, we have legal recourse to go back and have another hearing. Uh, inpatient, once that's ordered by the court, in those cases, uh, my work is done upon that order being entered, and whenever the treatment team determines they've reached their baseline or their point of stability, they'll be discharged, and that case is then over. Uh, it's important to know there are people that have to be committed multiple times during their life, and it has nothing to do with the kind of person they are. It has to do with their diagnosis and how well they work to keep it under control. It's a brain disease, you know, when kidneys malfunction, we got kidney disease and lung disease and mm -hmm. heart disease and brain malfunction, it's a brain disease. It's very much a disease that needs treatment. The, uh, the, you know, the question between drug use and mental illness is a complicated one, which came first, mm -hmm. and you know, drug usage will damage your brain and cause mm -hmm. a brain disease and mental illness. Mental illness could drive you, like you said, Randy, to self-medication, mm -hmm. and the distinction is important for probate court, right, because probate judge can't order you into rehab, can they? That's correct. Only into mental health treatment. And it's further complicated because the DSM calls addiction a mental illness. So <laughs> the, the it's two, a mess, isn't it? The two definitely interlap. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you being on the show with us today. I appreciate to, you to having To tell us some basic information about that. And if you, if you have somebody that's in need of uh, commitment, you need to call Highland Health Systems. That number 256 236 Three four zero three, right? That's correct. There you go. Call Highland. They will set you up on a commitment, and you'll get to see Randy at his office. That's right. At Lyric Square on Noble Street. And we appreciate you, Randy. Thank you for being here. Thank we'll you. be right back with our Crime Stoppers portion and the crazy criminal here on Calhoun County's Most Wanted. And welcome to the Crime Stoppers portion of our show where we ask your help on the following cases. First up, on April 26, a silver Saturn was broken into at the Bridges Youth Sports Complex on Pattyway Drive in Alexandria. A backpack containing an iPad, eighth generation, was taken from that vehicle. And between April 12th and April 13th, the 2016 Silver Dodge Charger with a black hood was stolen off the shoulder of I-20 East in Oxford. And that's it for your cases this week. If you have any information about these, please give Crime Stoppers a call. That number, 1-833-251-7867. Stupid! You're so stupid! Ronnie, you know what time it is? Crazy criminal it's time. It's crazy criminal time. <laughs> so take us there. Well, you're about to see a picture of a guy up there. That's Tony Dominic. Good old uh, Tony. He's from Louisiana. So Tony wanted to move a house. Oh, okay. So he went and talked to the local sheriff's office and they told him how to go about getting all the permits and stuff that he needs to move his house and how to do it the legal and proper way. Mm -hmm. He said, nah, I'm gonna do it my way. Ah, the Louisiana way. The Louisiana way. So now there's a ton of people without power, oh, God. telephone, internet, you name it trees damaged he just decided to drag it down the road and move it without getting the permits now he's, he's a, in jail he's a walking hurricane he is a walking <laughs> hurricane that's exactly what he is holy cow so what did they charge him with uh, <laughs> 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 there was a litany of things that they charged him with uh the most serious one of course being moving the house without a permit, <laughs> the house without now, a permit. The, the legal ramifications of all the money that's going to be spent replacing all that stuff i'm sure is going to come out of his pot well the taxpayers pockets and he's going to have to pay restitution it'll cost him an arm and a leg and a piece of his nose <laughs> <laughs> there it is well ronnie as always uncle john it's always a pleasure a pleasure to have you here on this busy voting day it and is. It is. Busy voting day. So by the time you see this, so the polls will have closed. But remember, there's always November. Right? <laughs> always November. So uh, anyway, we appreciate you tuning in today to our show. And we hope you tune in again next week. And we see you here, but not up there. Up there in the lineup <laughs> here on Calvin County's Most Wanted.